This is LXBN TV, and I'm Colin O'Keefe. The FTC recently entered into a proposed settlement with internet connected camera maker TrendNet, thus marking the regulatory body's first action on what many would call the Internet of Things. Joining me to explain the story and its impact is Rich Sanalesa, attorney with Information Law Group and author on the firm's excellent Info Law Group blog. Rich, first, tell me a bit about the settlement between the FTC and TrendNet. What is TrendNet, and what did they do to draw the FTC's ire? Sure, sure. Uh, TrendNet is a California manufacturer and reseller of networking equipment, uh, IP-connected cameras, variety of uh, home and business uh, technical uh, offerings, and uh, they're a uh, relatively small company that from from what I understand they have about 80 employees at least according to the FTC and what happened is that in 2010 they were offering a line of uh, secure view cameras that were internet enabled so that people could uh, via a, a, a separate app on their phone or through a web browser uh, Check in on on their IP camera in uh, in in the home wherever it was, and um, a lot of people purchase those to monitor children or, or or babies at home, what have you. And and as part of this the the software offering component of the camera, there was a variety of security settings that enabled people to either dispense with any secure login or to provide a password and, and authentication method so people could um, secure the camera in theory. What happened, however, is that the software didn't work. It, uh, regardless of what setting you put in there, uh, people were able to view the live camera feed. And what, of course, happened is that some, some hackers found out about this in uh, early 2012. They uh, exploited it and eventually posted up uh, live feeds from approximately 700 or, or, or so of these cameras for anybody in the world to uh, tap into. Sure enough, uh, this thereafter got some press coverage and was reported to uh, TrendNet, who then started taking steps to address the failings and, and, and the various hacks into these camera feeds. The FTC got involved because of the press coverage and because of complaints to it. And thereafter, um, as you know, went into negotiations and, and discussions with TrendNet that resulted in this proposed consent order and agreement that, that we've seen come out from the FTC. Uh, that's right now in the public comment period uh, as part of the Federal Register, which uh, no, no company ever wants to be part of in this fashion. And uh, the FTC commissioners are accepting public comments on, on whether this proposed order is fair. And um, that, that period will run until October 4th. And thereafter, the commissioners will vote to determine whether it should be modified or made final. And TrendNet will have to live with the results uh, thereafter. I see. So second, can you give us a bit of perspective on the so-called Internet of Things? How big is this and, and what do you see as the FTC's role in, in policing it? Sure. And, 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 that, and that's a great question because the, the FTC heralded this proposed order as the first action that, that it's taken in the broader in, Internet of Things, quote unquote. And I mean, the order is pretty conventional in terms of past consent orders. Uh, there, is, there is no proposed fine on, on TrendNet, which, which is uh, to their benefit, but it, it's very detailed in the sense that it requires them to rework how they develop software and, and other companies who are doing Internet of Things and IP connected devices will, will certainly need to consider what the FTC has, has said in here. Uh, as far as the FTC and the Internet of Things, it, it's clear that they will be making a big push into that entire market. In fact, um, they have a proposed workshop, public workshop set up for November 19th down in Washington, exactly on the security and privacy issues that are going to be generated by the Internet of Things with mobile devices, with uh, cars, with IP cameras like, like these as well as other home devices, uh, potentially appliances and other items that will be eventually connected or are 
currently connected to, to the internet and how that may Im Im implicate and impact consumer security and privacy, uh, which the FTC certainly this year has been pushing strongly on all mobile fronts. And, and I see this as kind of a continuation of efforts that they launched uh, several years past. Very interesting. This is going to be a big area to watch. Of course, more and more devices, uh, appliances even, are going online, and it's going to be fascinating to see how the FTC keeps tabs on everything. Uh, once again, that was Rich Sanalesa of Information Law Group. For more of his insight on this story and many others, be sure to visit the excellent infolawgroup.com. And of course, as always, if you're not already watching us here on LXBN, swing by LXBN.com where you can find hundreds more of these LXBN TV video interviews and curated commentary from the Lex Blog Network's more than 8,000 members. Thank you for joining me today, Rich. Thank you very much.